Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from ExitAutomation.com and welcome to another video of our Kubernetes for Tester course. And in this video, we are talking about understanding Kubernetes Master. Alright, so let's get started. Kubernetes Master. As we discussed in our previous video on Kubernetes architecture, Master, as it names, act as a controller for all the different nodes that we got. And once again, in our previous video, we saw the installation of Kubernetes itself within our Mac operating system. And we saw using Minikube, you can spin up one master and one node. Basically, it's for development purpose and we cannot have multiple different VMs running with multiple different containers with it because it's going to consume so much of memory within your machine and it's going to take so much of resources. And I don't think a laptop can really survive with having so much of infrastructure in it. And that's why we have this cloud thing on the top over here so that you can use that for working with the scaled nodes and things. Once again, the Kubernetes master is something which is going to be responsible for sending the commands, basically, you can understand something like that, so that it's going to do whatever action that we specify from within a file. And once again, don't worry about the file yet because we're going to talk about that later in this course. So Kubernetes master is a place where we interact with Kubernetes. That's it. So that's the one line that we need to understand. So we will interact with Kubernetes only through master and master is the one which is going to do all those interaction for us. And now you can talk, what is this master interaction of Kubernetes? Well, we can interact with Kubernetes from what is called as a Kube API server via a command line tool, kubectl. And once again, the kubectl is something that we installed in our previous video where I showed you how I can get the nodes and parts. So this is the command line utility, which is going to talk with the kube API server on the master, which is already running. So the kube API server accepts an JSON request by exposing and REST API and start working on what we asked for. And it stores all the different nodes information in what is called as a cluster store or etcd. So that's where all the informations are being stored for all the different nodes that it has got. So API server is basically an one place where we will talk with via the kubectl command line utility, something like the one we saw in our previous video, like kubectl get parts. So we're just asking like a command and the API server is returning all the information from it. This is how we do the interaction with Kubernetes master. So this is the first component of our Kubernetes master itself. And the next component comes, the very, very important component, as you saw in here, is the etcd or the cluster store. etcd is developed by the core OS team, which is responsible or act as a key value storage and persistent storage, which stores all the nodes information. And again, etcd is developed by core OS team. Well, there is a core OS available with the Linux world. I was kind of surprised when I saw this for the first time. So if you see here, if you just go to the Google and if you search for core OS, you can see there is something called as an open source container and Kubernetes. So the core OS is a uh, operating system which is responsible for performing so many different operations. A lot of exciting things is actually happening in the core OS team and it is recently acquired by Red Hat so that they can leverage the power of core OS and all the expertise that they have got. And as you can see here, they have joined the Red Hat family. It's really, really cool and, and Kubernetes is leveraging some of the components which is developed by the core OS team within itself. As you can see here, the cluster store is basically built by the core OS team which is used to store the key value informations or the nodes information within itself. So this is the component that we are talking about. So master has got another component, which is nothing but the etcd. And the next component the master has got is the controllers. So these controllers includes node controllers or replication controllers or endpoint controllers, service account and token controllers. So the node controller is responsible for noticing and responding when the nodes goes down. And the replication controller is responsible for maintaining the correct number of parts for every replication controller object in the system. And then there is an endpoint controller which populates the endpoint objects, that is joint services and parts. And finally, the service accounts and token controller creates a default accounts and API access token 
for the new namespace. And once again, don't worry about it yet because I know it's kind of a lot of theory in here, but these are some of the building blocks which we'll be discussing in our upcoming videos of this course where we'll be using some of the concept from here on the master's component side. But as I said, the only place that we will interact is going to be the API server. So these things are going to be more of theory rather the practical purpose itself. And finally, scheduler. So scheduler on the master that watches newly created parts that have no node assigned and selects a node for them to run on. Factors taken into account for scheduling decision includes individual and collective resource requirement, hardware, software, policy constraint, affinity and anti-affinity specifications, data locality, inter-workload in interference and deadlines. So scheduler basically do everything for us and it knows and it checks that every time if a node has been created and it is healthy and if it's running fine or not. So it's, this is the component which is responsible for making sure that the nodes are actually running without any problem and the part that is created within the nodes are actually healthy and they are really working fine or not. So all these important things are being taken care of by the scheduler itself. I know these are so much of theory in this video, but of course we have to understand some of the building blocks so that we can leverage the power of Kubernetes in much greater detail in our upcoming videos, we'll start working practically on them. So let's understand nodes then from our next video.